Hello, welcome to Yesterday's Airlines. A happy new year to everybody. Where I am in England, it is currently just after midday on New Year's Eve. But where I was a year and one day ago in Auckland, I can see that it is already 1st January 2023. And as the year ends, 2022, I thought it's a good time to take a look back at the year in 400 scale and to pick out my favorite releases of the year. Now, obviously I collect quite a large number of models. And even though the site is called Yesterday's Airlines, I don't just collect classics. I now I do collect a lot of classics and I collect classics from all across the world, but I also collect modern airliners. Specifically, I collect a large number of Chinese airliners. I also collect house colors and I collect Indonesian carriers and Russian airlines as well. All of those cross over my classic boundary, which is roughly the year 2000. So I collect quite a diverse range of airliners covering the vast majority of aviation history, plus several different regions of the last 20 years too. And that means that I've got quite a diverse range of models that I can choose from for picking my models of the year. In 2022, I collected 112 models, which sounds like a lot, and I guess it is, but it is significantly down on the number of models I've collected in previous years. Um, in 2018, for example, I, I got over 160. And I guess the reasons for that are twofold. Firstly, as my collection expands and gets larger, there's less models that I feel I need to buy. And secondly, the price of models has just gone up so much in the last year or two, it's getting incredibly expensive to buy new releases. I'm sure you guys are feeling the pain as well. Um, but despite all of that, I do feel the 400 scale is in rude health at the moment. And partly you can see that when you see the number of different brands that are producing models at the moment. And looking across the 112 models that I acquired this year, they came from 11 different major brands. Unsurprisingly, given my classics focus, Aero Classics produced the most number of models that I acquired, 44 in fact, so way above anybody else. NG models obviously are also producing a very large number of models and a really interesting diversity most of the time, and certainly high quality, and I acquired 29 of their releases, as well as a couple from their sister brands, HYJL Wings, and a couple from Buchanan models as well. In third place is Panda Models with a creditable 14, especially helped by their releases of Tupolevs. And then we've got a selection of the other brands. JC Wings and Aviation 400 both provided me with six models. And then I also acquired models from Phoenix and Gemini, but only two of each. I also acquired a couple of the retro models, TU-104s, in fact, 100% of retro models um, release output, and picked up a trio of models from YU Model, who have used Aero Classics and JC Wings brands, uh, molds. So there's a real diverse number of manufacturers out there producing quite a good range of models, and from that, 112 I have picked my top 15 models. Now these don't necessarily represent the best models of the year as of such. Obviously I can only really rank what I've acquired, but they are the 15 models that have brought me the most joy. That doesn't even mean that from a technical perspective, they're the highest ranking models in my review list. Um, I feel that list would be quite boring just to look through the models that scored the highest. What I want to do with this video is to look through the models that I've acquired, pick my favourites and the reasons they're my favourites, and also talk a bit about why um, I've selected those and what that means for the scale as well. Before I get into looking through my top 15 models of 2022, please subscribe to the channel, chuck a like on the video, and don't forget, once you've seen the vid, to check me out at Instagram and Facebook at Yester Airlines.
and obviously yesterday's airlines.com the hub of the majority of the content I produce and there's some really good new content coming up so you really want to keep an eye out on the site I also want to say thank you to everybody who supported me during 2022 it's been a really tumultuous year for me and my family as we've moved back from New Zealand to the UK and had to really start again in many ways but it's been a really fantastic year I want to thank everyone who's helped me out and you know the friends I've made this year uh, I especially want to thank Mike Cage and Dang Tung who've been producing some really delightful custom models for me um, and hopefully I'll be doing some more um, content on those custom models in the coming weeks but okay, let's get in and check out my top 15 models of the 112 that I've purchased this year. Here they come. So I'm going to run through my top 15 in the order they were acquired. And the first model up is by Aviation 400, which I acquired in March. It is the Air New Zealand 777-300ER in the all-black scheme registered ZKOKQ. And Aviation 400 have been producing a really, really nice range of models. They don't always get them out necessarily exactly at the time, but you can generally know that the models they produce are gonna be quality. Obviously, they've got the beacon lights and they've got lots of other really good attention to detail. And in this model, it all came together really, really well to produce a really attractive, triple seven from the airline the national airline of the country which i called home for 16 years before this year it's a really pleasing model and i think av400 are a brand that are definitely on the up they've got their new a320 molds and obviously the a380 which is just about a debut the uh, my version of that arrives just slightly too late to, to fit in this video but i think av400 definitely a brand to watch and this Triple Seven was a delightful release, um, a real favorite. It looks spectacular. Notice also the little striping on the underside aerial. I believe that's the uh, the sanitation aerial. Uh, just that sort of detail is really impressive in 400 scale. Well done, AB400. This is a great model. Next up is a United Airlines Douglas DC-6B wearing the 1950s mainliner scheme. And this is of course produced by Aero Classics. The registration of the aircraft is N37570. Aero Classics are about the only brand that produce any kind of prop liner nowadays, let alone a piston prop. And their DC-6B mold is really nice. This is a scheme which has been missing for some time. Um, a really obvious candidate and a really nice scheme that really takes you back to how you know you can smell um, the oil you can hear the the wine of those piston props um, somewhere like Chicago just really takes you back to that essence of the heyday I guess of flying in the 1950s it is a really nice release um, AC can still pull it out the bag when they need to with models like this and, and generally their DC-6s are great. Um, there are a couple of possible candidates for this list. There's also um, a really nice Real of Brazil DC-6 they made too. But I'm really pleased with this one. It's one which went alongside a cargo liner version as well which I also picked up and I think it's a really, really great model. And if you don't collect any piston props, but you do collect modern airliners, you know, check out some of these older models, especially for airlines like United, which will show that heritage in your fleet. It's not all about Maxes and triple sevens. Um, these Douglas prop liners have got a huge amount of style, and this is a great looking model. The next model from July is an Aeroflot Tupelo TO204 um, from NG Models. It's registered RA64010 and it's wearing this experimental Aeroflot Russian International Airlines livery. 
This is a model which I owned as a Shabak version um, and I'm really pleased to see produced in 400 scale. The NGTU204 is an excellent mold. I reviewed this model at yesterday's airline, so check out that review. It scored very well. It's a really, really nice model. I would like to see NG use their TU204 a lot more widely for a Russian airlines and not keep on picking these modern um, and rather, to my eye, obscure um, cargo carriers and such. But it is nice to see some Aeroflot from NG in the TU204. Panda had already released some very nice um, Aeroflot TU204s. But it is still amazing to think that we've got two models for such a relatively obscure type. So bravo to both NG and Panda. Um, but this TO204 really stood out for me this year as a really delightful model and a really interesting scheme that wasn't worn by any other type in the Aeroflot fleet in the 90s. It's a really nice model. Also in July, it was a good month, come another excellent release from Aero Classics. And this one is in the colours of Air Marshall Islands. And this model encapsulates what I really love about AC. Yeah, it's a relatively obscure airline, but for a geographic area, um, that's really interesting. And when you look at the history of the airframe, this is a DC-862 N799AL, then it's got a really interesting history that ties in with the politics and the airline as well. So. It's an excellent release, it looks really nice. I didn't get to review this one, um, but the U Aero Classics DC-8 molds are fabulous. And this is a really, really classy example of a really interesting scheme. And the sort of thing I'd like to see more of in 400 scale where we're picking you know, really interesting airlines. We're not always chasing the dollar, picking the latest all Nippon release or the latest American Airlines release. There's space for more diversity in the scale, and there's a lot of really cool history um, for carriers like Air Marshall Islands, you know, which I want to see. I'm really interested in that aspect, and this is another great release from AC. Model number five is a Transworld Airlines, and it's been a good year for TWA releases. But for me, topping that year has been the new NG models, 747SP, which has enabled me to replace my old Gemini Jets version. The SP is another mold which I'd like to see NG using a lot more, but when they do use it, the releases look spectacular and this is a super impressive aircraft. It's registered N57203. It also came out in that July period and it's wearing the classic twin stripe scheme with the solid titles. It also has that extra Boston Express titling on the left hand side and it really is a spectacular looking aircraft. Cannot argue with this release. Their twin stripes looks great on the SP. NG also released some other good SPs this year. There was a CAAC version which looks fabulous and a couple of great Pan Ams as well but overall they really need to start using this mold more. It is a spectacular mold. There is demand for SPs and as I say it's not all just about 787s and A350s. This aircraft looks vastly better than any of those will ever look and a lot more interesting. So bring on some more SP releases, but thank you very much, NG, for this one. This was a great model. Into August, and I picked up both of the Retro Models releases. In fact, they were sent to me by the owner of Retro Models. Thank you very much to him, but I would have acquired them anyway because they are both superb aircraft. It is really pleasing to see that he was finally able to get these two releases out. I know it's been a real challenge for retro models to get the models released. And these are so important from a historical perspective, but also look super nice as well. And the one that I've picked as one of my models of the year is the Aeroflot version, wearing the registration CCCP L5415. And it just looks really classy. Once again, 
I reviewed this aircraft over at yesterday's airline, so check out the review. It did very well. The mold is super nice. It's got really good detailing, and it's got that real historical importance, which so many of the releases nowadays don't have. And we're really lacking in early jets. Um, there's no really early 707 releases. All we've got are the Aero Classics DC-8s. And now we've got this TU-104, which is fabulous. A mold which hopefully will get a few more runs out, but, you know, we'll see. But this is the second of three releases that have now used it, and all three have been excellent models. If you didn't acquire any of these, then get searching. What are you waiting for? It's an excellent, excellent model showing really nice detail for a type which is like no other, really, and a superb package. So thanks very much Retro Models, I'm really impressed that you got these out finally after all that years of hard work and I hope to see more from your brand in 2023. This was a very productive month for excellent airliners and another model that I acquired in that month was the second Buchanan models release. Now Buchanan, as you probably know, is an offshoot of NG Models using NG Models molds and production facilities for producing some more classic aircraft and their second release was an Air Tours 757 registered GWJAN. Fabulous. It's a great scheme on my all-time favourite aircraft type I think and Air Tours was popular and common at LGW when I was a kid. It really is a delightful release and we've not had very many classic 757s from NG recently. So certainly they used to produce quite a large number of British registered holiday 757s and they all looked fabulous. So it's good to see another one popping up. There's still plenty to do and this model turned out superb. So it's really great to see it. Pairs very nicely with the Aero Classics A320 I own and overall is a real favourite of mine. So that's a great release from Buchanan. I'm really looking forward to get their Canada 3000 757 which has just come out hasn't arrived yet in fact I haven't ordered it yet but I will do and they're definitely a brand to watch Buchanan even though they are just an offshoot of NG hopefully NG will still continue to produce classic stuff and it won't all be funneled through Buchanan because obviously they're not releasing that many models but what they have released so far has been a nice selection of releases and this Air Tours was great. In the same month Another model came out, which is one that I've been waiting for a long time. And this is the Delta TriStar, where in the 1976 We The People Bicentennial logo. These Delta TriStars are just superb models. And if I had to pick one model out of these 15 as my model of the year, it may very well be this one. I'm in love with this Delta uh, TriStar and the MG TriStar mold in general. Yet again, another mold that is not used anywhere near enough. but. When you see how good these look, then you really, you know, it really floors you in comparison to where 400 sailors come from. And you look at these and think, no, this is just stunning. Um, the details are amazing. The printing is excellent. The mold is just fabulous. And the overall combination produces a really impressive 400 scale model. There's not much more to say, really. <laughs> this is a great release and one which I'm super pleased to have. It does mean that I've got all, I think, four of the Delta Tristars that have been released yet. There's still a couple of other Delta L1011s they could produce. I know they're hard to find on the seconds market. So it, these are exactly the sort of models that prove that classics are popular and do sell and are worth making because trying to find these Delta Tristars is super hard. So please, let's see some more Tristars. Um, it's an excellent mold and there's plenty more to do. Hopefully, there'll be some Eastern examples coming in the new year now that we've seen that Buchanan Air America version, which is largely wearing Eastern scheme. So those would be awesome. There's a whole range of Eastern TriStars to go. So then you'd have both sets of Atlanta's home carriers wearing, you know, on the, not wearing, but on the big trijet. It would look great. Really looking forward to that. But this model, alongside the other Delta Trust that they produced were both superb and looking forward to seeing more of that sort of thing from NG.
So we're eight models down and we're still in August. Um, the last model from August, which makes the top 15 of the year for me, is a Panda Models release, but one which was done exclusively through Waffle Collectibles. It is a Southwest Airlines 737-300 wearing the wonderful California One Ski. Um, and I am a real fan of these state liveries that Southwest have produced. However, the only ones that fit within my collection criteria really are these ones from the 1990s in the desert gold colors. I got a few others with the canyon blue. These are really nice and it's great to see the Panda models 737-300 mold getting some usage. It doesn't get enough, especially not in the liveries that it really should be wearing. Um, I don't want to see obscure cargo airlines from Malaysia. I want to see core fleet airlines from the United States and Europe from the 1980s and 90s. And this aircraft, N609SW, wearing the California One scheme, looks really, really nice. I think Panda do a great job in general. They do produce a relatively small number of models, but they do produce a lot for retailers, such as this one. And there have been some really interesting um, choices made by people like Prairie Diecast and Waffle Collectibles and My Hobby House and others. And this is uh, a lovely example that works really well. So a really nice model and I look forward to hopefully seeing um, some other 737-300s from Pandas. So things like Air Cow, New York Air, Viva Air these kind of interesting carriers with really colorful, nice schemes. So hopefully there'll be some of those in 2023, you never know. But this one, the California one, was a great choice for Waffle. Um, so, you know, retailers keep on prodding Panda to produce these sort of models. They are great. Okay, we move in to September with our next model, and this is another Aero Classics, one of the great molds, which is nice to be seen coming back, and that had previously not been used much at all, was the Alyushin IL-18, and this aircraft, Aero Caribbean, is about as colorful as you can get in IL-18. I've got quite a lot of the Aero Classics IL-18s from this year, Egypt Air, Tehran, Lev, uh, but this one I think is my favorite. Um, Aero Caribbean were flying this type into the 2000s and this scheme is just wonderful. It really has that sun, sea, sand vibe going. The colours are great and once again this is an example of where Aero Classics do the job perfectly. The mould is really nice. Great to see another prop liner, albeit turbo prop this time, and Aero Caribbean it's probably not the most obvious release for an IL-18, but nonetheless, it's super colorful. It was well known at the time, and it looks really, really good. So I think that it's great to see the IL-18 back in usage by AC, and it's really nice to see them putting out a good range of releases on the type. And this was one that really struck a chord with me. Um, probably slightly stretching my collection criteria, but you can't really turn down models when they look so colorful and interesting. That leaves five aircraft for us to discuss. Um, and the next one up is a 737-800. It is one of the Air China schemes. Air China has got quite a lot of love from NG models this year. And I know it's probably not a lot of people's favorite um, airline but they've got some really nice special schemes and NG have produced some really nice examples this year. And this is my pick of those. It is um, the aircraft wearing the Olympic, Winter Olympics, that is 2022 um, livery with the skiers on B5497. The NG 737s have really revolutionized 737s in 400 scale. They've really taken them to a next level. And the first time we've really had an exceptional mold um, this example looks delightful, really love the colourful scheme on the aircraft and I think it's a really, really nice choice. And there's not a lot more to say really. I guess uh, it is a relatively, you know, simple airline, the sort of one that gets produced quite a lot, but illustrates that there's a lot of colour and interest still to be had in modern airlines. It's not necessarily 
all only classics I love, and I really do like these Chinese schemes, and this is a great example of that. The next aircraft is also by NG Models, and this one is a 737-600. It is nice that NG, when they produce mold series, fill them out completely. And it's great that they put the effort in to produce the 737-600, and they've started to produce a surprising range of airlines on it. But the 736, which I wanted the most, and probably the only one that really fits my collection criteria outside of China, is this Fly Globespan example. Fly Globespan was another interesting and cool British airline, slightly beyond where I ought to be collecting because it's in the early 2000s, but nonetheless, it looks really good. And I was super pleased to see the 737-600 mold get the quality it deserves and start getting some releases. And, and it's really nice to see um, an example like Fly Globespan, which is one of the more interesting airlines, I think, that. NG, or one of the more unusual airlines, I should say, that NG has picked this year to release. It's a nice scheme, it's a nice model, and it turned out really well. And the sort of thing, which makes me think that NG still can fulfill some of that potential around the diversity of airlines they produce that has maybe slightly gone off the boil this year. But overall, a great model, really nicely put together. Now, I talked a bit about Panda models um, with their 737s, and I did mention that a lot of the Panda models aircraft I acquired this year were tuplet T134s, but I never expected anyone to produce a mold for the T134 UBL. I don't usually collect military aircraft at all, but it's really hard to turn down such a bizarre and interesting aircraft as the UBL. I've reviewed this aircraft at the website, so check out that review. Obviously, um, this aircraft has a nose of a TU-22 backfire grafted on to the 134 airframe. It's used for training purposes and it gives it the most bizarre look. I'm still really amazed that they've produced this. Uh, it's not the sort of model you'd imagine. There's a huge, you know, base of people crying out for, but the fact that they've done it just is, is amazing. And it looks really good. Their 134 mold is already stunning and has been the basis for a series of excellent customs by my friend Dang Tung this year. But this example is just so weird and unusual that it's really hard to turn down and it looks so cool. And this is one of the things that I want to see in 400 scale. I want to see this diversity. I want to see different aircraft being made, um, you know, really pushing the boundaries. And this mold is one of the ones from this year which I think has really done so. So even though Panda don't produce that many models for themselves and they do produce a reasonable amount for retailers, they still are really doing some unusual and interesting things. And this UBL was a great example of that. So really nice model. Two to go. And we're up to uh, a November model that's arrived in my collection. And this one is from Sichuan Airlines. I also reviewed this aircraft at the website. It's one of a pair of A350s which Sichuan produced in uh, towards the end of the year. Both of them are wearing these really colorful liveries for the, uh, the Chinese Universiad games. And, you know, it's not just classical aircraft I collect. I also am getting a decent number of modern aircraft. So I've got quite a lot of A350s in my collection. And I have to say that I really like the AV400 A350. Once again, it's got all those really cool details. It's got the beacon lights, it's got really interesting um you know tilting undercarriage and it's got the the moving fan blades and things and av400 really go the extra mile with those details and that a350 has always been super nice this scheme is particularly colorful and interesting exactly the sort of vibrant scheme that i like um and one of the reasons that i collect chinese airliners and b304v here looks really really good with this livery on it a really nice model and again illustrative i think of how a 400 have overtaken phoenix and even jc sometimes um with their releases so really it feels like a 400 energy models together are really providing a lot of competition and filling this space in this core market that was previously owned by phoenix and jc wings and this model you know turned out super nice so 
yeah, like I said earlier on, I think 8400 is a nice brand, they're good to work with, and they've been producing some really classy models like this one. So that leads to the last model of my choices for the year, a model which only arrived in December, and that is the China Xinjiang IL-86 by YU Models, but using the JC Wings mold. It is, or it made me feel so good to see that JC Wings has rediscovered this mold's existence and is now starting to produce some models for themselves using it. Um, I get the feeling YU provided that push for them, and it's really nice to see such an interesting aircraft and such a good mold as well come back in to 400 scale because it had been more than a decade since JC had used the mold previously. So really super pleased. Um, again, the livery isn't perhaps the most exciting, but it is quite an attractive livery, China Xinjiang, and it fills a real gap that hadn't been um, filled before, I guess. Um, there was a previous Xinjiang IL-86, but not in this scheme. And this model, again, shows a lot of attention to detail um, that JC actually is really good for. And I'm a little surprised there are no JC Wings models in my um, my top models of the year. But JC obviously always have this issue of getting their models out in a reasonable time scale, which is a bit of a pain. <laughs> Hopefully next year some of them will get into the top because they are producing a lot of really good quality and have some excellent molds and some excellent printing. Having said that, the molds and the releases that I tend to get from JC um, tend to not necessarily be their best molds um, because I prefer their classic releases like the KLM 737, the Aeroflot 737, Aeromexico 767. They're good models, but they're not necessarily the best molds for those types available. Nonetheless, this is an excellent release and I'm really looking forward to seeing more IL 86s from JC Wings. And I'm, I'm really pleased that YU models have been kind of prompting manufacturers like Aero Classics and JC to rediscover aircraft. Um, that they haven't used for a while. Um, it'll be interesting to see what YU models do in the new year. I'm really hoping there'll be a China Eastern Fokker 100. That would be excellent. Kind of get the feeling there might be. Um, but it's nice to see smaller brands leveraging the capabilities of existing manufacturers to get interesting products out there for the local markets. So obviously, YU models is aimed primarily at Chinese market, but it's producing really interesting types and it'll be great to see more of this kind of thing from other brands or new brands that could be in Europe. Um, for example, producing aircraft specifically for those markets where you can target your sales. So not only is this a lovely model, but I think it illustrates um, something which has been going on in 400 scale with smaller brands and retailers utilizing the resources of say JC Wings and Panda models a lot more than they have done in recent years anyway. But this is a great release and a great model to end my top 15 for the year. So that brings to an end my top 15 models of 2022. One of the things that I really enjoy about collecting 400 scale is the diversity of model airlines and aircraft types and I hope my top 15 shows that we've got, you know, classic props from the 1950s. We've got ultra modern twin jets from 2022 and everything in between covering both Soviet and American and European manufacturers. It's a great time to be collecting 400 scale models, despite all the price increases. Um, there's a really good range of high quality brands out there and you know, just because I haven't got a Gemini Jets or a JC Wings or a Phoenix in my top 15 doesn't mean that I don't collect those brands as I showed at the beginning of the video. There's a lot of quality to be had and I hope you're enjoying your collecting journey as much as I am. I'm really looking forward to 2023 and what that brings. I think NG are going to have some really cool stuff this year. I'm sure there'll be more surprises because every year now you're getting new surprises from different brands. So it's going to be hopefully a really great year. Thank you very much for watching the video, guys. Have a great new year and I look forward to talking with you again as the new year progresses. I'll see you later.